Hello everyone, if you want to learn line by line code implementation of this live video demo in which a deep learning architecture first detects the face and then based on facial features it identifies either a person is wearing mask or not. In case if a person is not wearing the mask, it can also generate an alarm correspondingly. The beauty of this deep learning architecture is that no matter which race you belong to or which age you belong to, it works for all of them perfectly. If you want to learn all this, please stay tuned till end of this video. Let's get started. My name is Shanullah and I'm a PhD student at Inha University, South Korea. My major is Computer Vision and Deep Learning and in this video, we will, we will be covering face mask detection using transfer learning. For programming, uh, we will be using Python as a programming language and for overlaying these rectangles and text data and identification of this face, we will be using OpenCV. And for classification of this face mask uh, faces, we will be using deep learning library such as TensorFlow. So this is outline of my today's video. And in this case, uh, uh, firstly, we will train the deep learning architecture for, fa uh, for different faces. Uh, and these faces will be divided into two. Uh, half of them will be wearing mask and half of them will be without face mask, right? And uh, after training all this deep learning architecture, once we train them, uh, then we will go for the live video demo. So what's the motivation behind all this? As you know that because of the COVID-19 in 2020, we have faced uh, a lot of problems, right? So it's a need of the day that we must uh, ensure that everybody wear masks, right? So these kind of algorithms have been developed with the passage of time and many researchers are already working on it such that in order to deploy this deep learning architecture on the surveillance camera, uh, so that if anyone uh, among the crowd is not wearing mask so he can be he or she can be identified and then can uh, we can tell him or either we can find them that please wear the mask right so as you can see these images uh, so many researchers are working on it so but this video targets the beginners level so even if you even though if you do not have any background to the deep learning you still can follow our, our instructions and you can just develop your own algorithm so let's review a data set right as you already know that for deep learning architecture we must need a data set right in order to train our deep learning architecture right so previously there was a data set of faces flicker face data set right it contains 137016 uh, uh images of the different phases right it contains different races you can see different races and different ages as well so recently uh, in august 2020 uh, one of the authors like uh, for example uh, like this cabani i guess and uh, these uh, they have developed a paper masked face net and also developed a data set right so actually this data set was uh, inspired by already existing face faces what they did is that they somehow managed to create the same face with a mask right and you can see that different uh, masks have different orientation different rotations different scaling so this is they have created a new data set right so the same uh, in this regard now it's really easy for deep learning that's you have a same face without mask or sorry without mask and with mask right so it's really easy now a deep learning architecture can learn the features of the mask right so if you just give these two images to deep learning then he can uh, uh, like the deep learning can identifies that which of the face is with mask or which of them is without mask so to, in order to start uh, deploying our deep learning architecture, we can have two methods, right, generally. First is that we can develop our own algorithms. For example, like these pa this is the research paper, they have developed their own deep learning architecture. But the good thing is that uh, rather than reinventing the wheel, it's better that what if we can 
you utilize the already existing solutions which is transfer learning so for example if we have a deep learning architecture containing a lot of layers right of uh, sorry for my <laughs> bad uh, drawing so if we have a deep learning architecture and we have multiple layers in it and for example if we have a weight matrix okay so uh, and this deep learning architecture want to classify cat and dog right so in this case if we start learning from from the scratch so it will start like this is epoch right so it, it will start learning from the scratch and then it will improve its accuracy by learning right and it will try its best to minimize the loss and increase the accuracy once we have trained our deep learning architecture with their weights because with the passage of uh, time uh, with increasing number of the epochs it will add, um, modify the weights and finally it will find the best weights to classify cat and dog right uh, after some time for example someone got a problem that we need to identify car and truck right so in order to classify car and truck so what are the solutions one can uh, develop it, his, his or her own deep learning architecture and start training everything from the start but as i told you before that rather than reinventing the wheel as the nature of the problem is same right this is the classification problem and for example these were designed for cat and dog or maybe other animals and you want to classify the vehicles so as the nature of the problem is same such as the classification and rather than starting from the scratch it's better to use transfer learning and in the case of the transfer learning you will witness in this video in the proceeding uh, video uh, you will see when we will be coding so in order for the uh, the transfer learning it will start from for example 50 percent or 60 percent right so it's it's a good way to start so it will start the from 50 percent and then it will only readjust those parts of the weights which are unnecessary for it right and for example in case your problem is really similar like these are cat dogs and you want to classify lion and for example Mm, any other animal so in that case you can also freeze some of the layers right you have some connection the connections are weights right so you can also freeze some weights so if the problem is really similar you can freeze some of the layers if the problem is little different just like car and truck so in which the features are different right for animals most of the features will be same but for car and truck the features will be different and so in that case uh, you don't need to freeze it but you can start for the already trained weights right so in that that is the way we call it transfer learning so as i told you before uh, there was an image net data set like uh, it was introduced i think a long time ago but alex alex net was introduced in 2012 and it break uh, it actually it outperforms the human capacity so after that the classifiers the classifier of the deep learning emerges uh, and it revolutionized our industry and we have developed so many uh, image classification classifiers and the famous names are mobile net which by google this is also by google right so we have multiple solution already existing so uh, how to apply our face mask data set for transfer learning using already uh, existing solution so uh, the one thing was that the input dimension is 2 to 4 into 2 to 4 right so our face mask data set has 1024 into 1024 so all we need is to um, just down sample this image right so that it can uh, work right so one thing is to down sample so that the input size must be same another thing is that is as it was designed for the thousand classes so the last fully connected layer contains will contain the thousand nodes right one thousand nodes and as it need to uh, classify the thousand classes and there will be some softmax activation layer as well to have 1000 probabilities right so now uh, our problem is only two classes right for the face mask either a person is wearing a, a face mask or not right so we will introduce the two kind of images with face mask and without face mask right so we need to modify only two layers one is the classification layer which is fully connected layer so in our case it will contain only one 
right why because it's a binary classification either the value for example the value will be one or zero right so we can easily identify and secondly as it was soft max for different probabilities we don't need a lot of probabilities we we can solve this problem with a sigmoid such as if answer is for example positive or negative it will be enough for us so in the case of the transfer learning only two steps we need to follow we need to change the last modify the last fully connected layer of any of them uh, okay and we need to change the classification layer right so two layers we need to change and these are the two things and one of the thing is that we need to down sample if you do it and start training i hope within few epochs you will get very good results and you will witness in this video let's dive into the implementation so the tools we will be using in this video is uh, like uh, we are lucky if you are using windows or even uh, uh, linux as well so we are lucky that we have anaconda anaconda is a package is a software which is a package of multiple libraries and ids if you install anaconda it will install like python by default and multiple libraries for you and ids as well right I, the ids is the one in which we program like vs code you might have heard about the vs code and spider and Jupyter Notebook. So the most um, the the suitable one uh, which is which we can use for our this tutorial is Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and in which we can also you will see that in this video that we can have some notes as well. So it's it's the beauty of Jupyter Notebook that whatever we have performed, it is already saved, and you can have some notes as well and for the libraries we will be installing tensorflow and then numpy for some calculations and as i told you before for overlaying of text and finding their faces we will be using opencv let's dive into the implementation okay so in order to install anaconda all you need is to just visit google and then write anaconda download and the first link you will find just open it and for example if you go down you will find the download link for the executable files right so for for windows it's 64-bit uh, or 32-bit so based on your specifications of your operating system you can just download from mac os linux or windows so in my case i use 64-bit uh, for windows so just all i need is to just download and once you download it you will um, all you need is to just click next 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 and it, it is simple uh, super simple to install once you uh, install uh, the uh, anaconda navigator so when you write in a search bar anaconda you can just click the anaconda navigator once you click the anaconda navigator you will come over here you can observe that some of them the, the button is green with install uh, uh, and some of them is blue uh, the reason behind all this is that I have already installed so when you install the anaconda navigator so all all of them will be green button right like this so all you need is to just click this install button over here so I have already installed Jupyter notebook so that is why in my case it's launched so I assume that till now you have already installed the anaconda navigator and that's then you have clicked the install button and you have already installed Jupyter notebook so once you have installed Jupyter Notebook, so it's always better that you must have uh, created a, a specific folder, right? So my folder is not empty, but in your case, for example, I assume that your folder is empty. So it's better that just copy the path of your folder and then again write the anaconda. And in, in this case, rather than clicking the anaconda navigator, you need to install uh, click the anaconda prompt once you sorry once you click the anaconda navigator uh, all you need is to just cd and sorry cd and just paste the path and f and then jupiter sorry jupiter notebook right so once you just click the jupiter notebook so it will open the jupiter notebook okay so then uh, my folder is not empty so that is why it's showing a lot of things so in your case your folder will be empty and all you need is you just click new python okay so let me for example separate for you guys so i assume that you have already installed the anaconda navigator and the jupyter notebook so how to install um, further libraries so these are the for example 
these are the dependencies we, which we need to install for in order to follow our, this tutorial. So uh, for the first one is import TensorFlow STF. So in your case, it will not work as long as you just install this using this command. So in order to install, again, you need to uh, visit the Anaconda prompt. But this time, make sure you just right click and run as an administrator, right? It will ask for some administrator rights once you do have it so all you need is to just sorry uh, no you all you need is to just pip install like this right so once you have uh, for example like this so all you need is to just pip install tensorflow gpu right and in case you don't have gpu then just pip install tensorflow so i assume that you have opened the anaconda prompt in a, as a run as administrator and you have executed all this pip install opencv in order to install opencv and then pip install matplotlib and numpy so, so now i assume that you have already installed all of the dependencies and in order to execute this uh, one of the method is just click over here and otherwise uh, you can just um, for example shift uh, plus enter is the command right to execute one cell at a time right so this is one cell and shift enter so once i press shift enter it's busy because it's just importing all of these libraries and it's done right so now that i have uh, for example mm, uh, downloaded uh, or installed all of this de these dependencies for example now okay so this is my data set so for example now you need to visit for example google okay just visit the google and face mask if you write face mask data set let me zoom for you so now you will find this paper mask net if you right click and open a new window then in this case you will find like this and this to uh, this https okay so once you click here you will reach over here for the mask faced net data set right so once uh, they have some for example you see that you do have a link like th these images with correctly faced they just right click and open new window right and then you will reach uh, for the dropbox uh, and then if you right click and just download so you can download all of them but so far i have only downloaded this zero one right so if you click this zero you can find a lot of images uh, so because of uh, so once you download uh, you will find like this this is my data set i have already downloaded so it's with face mask right so this is the zero 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 so it's with face mask so in order to find for example the same data set without the face masks so actually as i told you before that this was inspired by the so the same and on the same website they have also provided the link because it was inspired with this right so they do have the same link and you can just visit over here and if you just click the, the data set and then you will find a 000 as well you see and if you download the data set uh, like this images and then you can find you see over here 000 so this 00 if you download this one and you will find the same data set without masks so no mask right so it is it, the same picture you see you can see over here the same picture without mask and with mask right so once i assume that you have downloaded and you have created a data set folder and you have two of the folders inside it right let me zoom for you oh it's not uh, it's okay so, right so you have two fa uh, uh, folders one is face mask and with one is without face mask so now i assume that you have already downloaded all these images with face mask and without face mask right so now once you do have all your data set then just you can visit data set face mask and i'm giving the path in order to load my first image so the command is cv2 as you have already uh, downloaded the let me zoom for you already downloaded the uh, and installed open cv so import cv2 and cv2 dot let me yeah so cv2 dot im read is the command right so once i execute this command if you perform plt dot i am show 
this is img error. Let, let me copy the name. Okay, so you, you, you can find the image is not exactly the same. Why? Because it's a BGR. So basically the uh, the CV2 is always uh, deal with a, a BGR image. So in order to convert into RGB, it's better that rather than using simple command, you should use this command. Right. So once you use the BGR to RGB, you can just find that it's the same. And it's the dimension of this. If I want to check the dimension of this image dot shape. So you see it's 1024 by 1024 into 3. 3 means that it's it contains 3 channel RGB, right? So once we can check that, we can just easily read our image and load our image. So, for example, it's not uh, trivial that, uh, it's not a good way that we uh, just read line by line, uh, like one by one. So it's better that we make a folder, right? So in this case, we have a data directory, like a data set, and this is our training data set, and we have two classes. In this case, this is a list of uh, Python, so face mask and no mask. So make sure that this is a folder name, right? So in our case, the these are the folder names as well as these are also the labels, right? So if you have multiple categories like uh, for example ca car for example car truck and motorcycles and other things if you have data set this code is so dynamic that you can just generate your own one right so if you follow our, our instruction you can create your own deep learning architecture and your own data set as well you can train your deep learning on your own data set right so what we are doing over here is that, for example, we have two classes. Whatever the classes, uh, it's a dynamic code. So for categories in classes, this is our variable. So it will search all the classes and then it will join the path, right? This one and this one, and then in all in the list directory, it will find all the files exist in this path. All the file it will read and stepwise it will read all of them. So let me break, for example, at the first image. Okay, if I break the first image, you see this is the first image. If I visit the data set, so this was my first image, right? So which we can easily uh, show over here. So this was my first image. Now that we, uh, we can load all our directory, so it's easy that, for example, let me, mm, okay. So now, as I told you before that for deep learning, uh, for in, in order to use ImageNet classifiers, like all the classifiers which were trained on ImageNet. So we need a uh, 2 to 4 size, like 2 to 4 by 2 to 4, right? So image size must be 2 to 4. So this is the code for resizing, like cv2.resize, this is image array, and this is my variable name, and then let me resize. So we can easily, like this is 2 to 4, previously it was 1000 by 1000. Now that we have resized our image, so, it's better that, for example, let me convert uh, this. This is I'm making my nodes. So you, you need to visit cell and then mark down. And if you sh press shift enter, these nodes will be saved. Like reading the images and converting all of them to array. So in this case, it was not array. So uh, the, the good thing is that we can convert into array. So why we are doing it? Because we need for two things, very important thing. One is data. This is my data and another uh, thing we need labels right so this is my labels so in deep learning we need two things one is the target labels and it also call it target and one is data right so uh, this is my function i have written the function and then again uh, the, the, if so far we have learned this to join the path and then the class index is zero and one so it's better even if you have multiple categories for example if you have car truck motorbike and other categories it's so dynamic that it will read all of the indexes right so no matter who is first and who is second right so you don't need to care about it so it's the for the first one it will consider zero and then one one and if you have multiple multiple categories it will uh, go so on right so let me execute shift by pressing shift enter and it's not actually executed because it's just a function let me call the function so once i'm i call this function so now it is reading all the images inside the folders and it is saving 
in this uh, list which is by appending right so over here we are appending this list so in this list what we are appending one is our data set like all the data and another thing is class label so these two things are really important like one is data and one is for example uh, the class numbers in the indices right and over here we are making making sure that all of them should be before saving into this all uh, the dimension should must be the image size right so this is cv2 dot resize and uh, as i told you that we have already ex executed this command image size so my image size is already 224 by 224 right once i make sure that it has been executed so let's check that how many total images we have stored so both i mean adding these two 1951 so actually uh, this is 951 and i think another one so these are th thousand right so thousand plus 951 is so it has successfully uh, have read uh, or loaded all of the image so 1000 plus 951 is 1951 so the reason why another with mask one is less than thousand because they are correctly labeled so maybe they have their data set generator uh, the guys who gen have generated the data set they might have found some problem so that is why the 49 images are less but it's uh, not a very big difference if you have for example one of them is thousand class a thousand in numbers and other is for example 500 then it's it makes a difference right so then we will have a send we will have an imbalance problem so it must be very close right so the number of the uh, images must be same so in order to before training it it's better that we shuffle all of them why because we don't want anything to be overfitted then if we don't shuffle it then the deep learning will try to learn the for example the uh, it will try to learn uh, the sequence as well so over here we don't bother about the sequence right rather we are only concerning about the each image individually right so once we have done uh, it's a better way that to save it in the list of x like this is again it's my data i'm actually repeating the same things but it's better to before for example store um, using my Mm, like uh, using the deep learning architecture it's better that we must have these kind of them and another thing one important thing i'm doing is that minus one means that all the size of the images and this is two to four into two to four and this is rgb channel so i'm making sure that all of the data set is mm, in numpy array it must be numpy array for the deep learning architecture because previously it was list and now in appending the features and labels now uh, this is also features right so we can call it label or features right so now let me execute this command and once i have executed let me check the shape so you see so we have successfully loaded and converted all the images into array numpy array like 1951 are the images and 224 by 224 into 3 right so uh, this is rgb channel so it's better that uh, it's a crude way to normalize but anyway you can just normalize in this way otherwise we do have a scikit learn a library available for normalizing the data but it's okay as uh, i told you before that it's for this uh, tutorial is uh, targeting the on the beginners so that is i for beginner level it's enough that we are just normalizing so so the maximum value of the gray level is 255 so that is why i'm just downloading uh, dividing it by 255 so it's, we are normalizing the data so one another important thing is that uh, we are just uh, as you see that we have converted the data into numpy array but not uh, we, have, we haven't converted the for example let me check what is in y right so in y for example if i check zero uh, if i do it's zero right and for example if i check let me check the thousand one so it contains one right so it has zeros and one right so the label is zero and one so either we do have a face mask or not right so let me convert all this array into the uh, all this list into number array and we can just store all this data into the pickle right so pickle is to just uh, uh, 
saving this data so in, it's in a good way now uh, the another um, motivation uh, behind doing this step is that it's better that we don't need to perform all this uh, reading images and normalizing it and converting everything into uh, other formats so it's better that now we are ready to train our deep learning architecture so it's better that we have so far we have reached the all pre-processing so it's better to save it so next time when for example next time when you just close everything and you need to uh, do uh, perform your uh, deep learning training so it's better that you just load it so these are the command to load it i'm not going to uh, execute y because i do have x and y already stored if even if i execute it uh, i will have the similar data right so mm, let me so now it's time to start the deep learning uh, uh, model for training to create a deep learning model for the training let me convert it into nodes okay so <clears throat> Uh, as uh, I told you before that we have already installed the ten uh, TensorFlow like in the beginning we have already installed the TensorFlow uh, but for deep learning let me do it again uh, for combining all the same stuff uh, together so import t TensorFlow as trade-off and from TensorFlow we are importing Keras and layers and now the most important part of the transfer learning right so before going into transfer learning for example uh, the the best thing about the keras api is that we can use model uh, dot tf dot keras uh, if i press a tab it will complete for example then applications and if i press a tab it will complete and then for example if i press a tab now you can see over here we have a lot of image classifiers right so we have for example dense net inception and mobile net and version 2 of the mobile net and resnet you might have heard uh, these names like vgg and others right so the most uh, i think uh, for this tutorial we will file mobile net because uh, it's very lightweight other uh, as compared to other one although uh, individually it's not that lightweight but it's still it's a good lightweight it's a still lightweight like with the uh, 4.2 million parameters we'll just witness them uh, the parameters soon so once i have run the, uh, this command so this uh, has just uh, now in the model we have this mobile net which is already pre-trained right so it's my pre-trained model right so uh, if you execute this command for the first time so it need to download all the weights from internet but uh, for example as i have already did uh, and executed this command so in this case my, in my case it didn't uh, uh, it didn't download right so now if we check model dot summary uh, you can see that it has so many layers and you can see that it has 4.2 million parameters right so still it's lightweight to it is considered to be lightweight right because other like vgg and other resonant 101 it's more uh, uh, complex than this and having more parameters right so the parameters are 4.2 million so what do we need to do for example for transfer learning let's start uh, transfer learning as I told you before that transfer learning is a technique that we want to use the existing solution and as I told you before that we need to change like this softmax and for example from the dropout layer like these three layers we need to modify right so till then we are okay but after that we need to modify so so uh, again uh, for example uh, let me change it like this is the one like a uh, transfer learning in a transfer learning we are using these are the nodes right it's not a code uh, i hope you already under understand all this it's just uh, for your information like it's tuning the weights and we'll start from the last checkpoint so whatever it uh, they have trained the model so we will start from the last checkpoint so for example uh, let me check uh, for example if I uh, say for example this is my variable name is equal to if I say model dot if I for example I have loaded the model right uh, okay sorry okay so I have stored this model already so if I just write model dot 
when I press the tab, you see you can find a lot of them. So for example, if I say layers and model dot layers, for example, I want to take the zero layer, which is the input dot. Again, I want to do the input, right? So if I execute this command, and then what is my output? So for example, base output. So as I told you for transfer learning, I need to cut. I don't need these three layers, so I need to cut from here. So I will follow model dot lay, uh, layers again so one method is to start from zero and find the what is the index of this layer but the beauty of the python is that you can start from last point so last one is minus one right so this is minus one minus two minus three and this is minus four right so it's the beauty of the python so we can uh, have the cut this from here so it's minus four so it is minus four right dot in this case as i need the output of this uh, this layer i need output of this layer so let me execute base output and then after having the output for example then i can have from uh, one of them is flatten layer so this output layer we have input of this flatten layer and then uh, as I, as you know that we have uh, already import the layers so now i need to concatenate more layers look three more layers i have added right one is flattened then as you see this is only one uh, as it's a binary classifier only zero or one we need to classify either having a face mask or not and the activation function previously you see over here the activation activation function was softmax and uh, but in our case we are using the sigmoid right let me execute shift enter now that uh, we have all the input like this is our input and this output let cre let's create the model like the command for the creating the model is keras.model inputs input is our my base this input and output is final output right right here with the sigma let me execute and now if i check new model dot summary now if i execute this uh, you can find that for example almost similar layers but you see this is 3.2 million rather than uh, uh, 4.2 million in this case it was 4.2 million and previously there were these three layers like with, with a thousand the last one was was with a thousand but in my case it's only one right so significantly it has reduced the parameters because of the last fully connected layer so now it has reduced the parameters and now we have changed so we have only one neuron in the last tense layer and we have created our model now it's time for example it's time to uh, setting all uh, the for example the configuration so let me make my notes so what is the for example what's my no it's, it's not open and close it's a face mask or without face mask right i'm just writing these notes for for you guys right so without mask right so these are our two classes so it's binary classification right so how to set the binary classification so new for uh, as I told you before that uh, we have used the uh, sigmoid so the loss is binary cross entropy there are other if you use softmax then we can use uh, sparse uh, cross entropy and stuff like that but in last case uh, in the for binary case we have binary cross entropy and the optimizer we the most famous one is Adam we also use for softmax so now that I have compiled my model so let me Mm, for example let me uh, execute this mm, two box i think one epoch is also enough so now i am training my uh, deep learning model right so it has it will take some time in order for uh, the uh, making create uh, cre for training so as you can see that it start from more than 40 percent and now it's training right why because we are doing transfer learning and uh, we are doing uh, the transfer learning and uh, it on it's do not start the all the weights from scratch rather it start from the already trained model another thing for example as i told you before that although this problem is a little different but what if the problem was too much similar and we don't want to uh, return all the weights and rather for example if i want to freeze some layers for example if i want to freeze these kind of layer or first few layers i want to freeze because these are uh, 
uh, if you want uh, these not to be uh, modified and these are really important for your case for example then in that case you can freeze your layers as well so in order to freeze your layers for example uh, for layers in let me make it layer right in model dot layers right and once I do it like okay so then in that case I can make um, a layer like this this layer if I have first layer and then layer uh, I can mo uh, specify which uh, layer I want to modify uh, I want to freeze them and then for example if I may want all of them layer dot trainable is equal to false once I perform this once I execute so it will in this case it will uh, freeze all of the layers right it will freeze all of the layers but for example if I don't want to freeze all of the layers I want some particular layers to be frozen then uh, I can specify the index of that another if you don't want to do it like this then even though uh, for single layers for example you can do it like this model dot layers uh, okay model dot layers uh, for example if I want to only freeze my first layer okay oh sorry the first layer then I can make it sorry dot trainable like this Tra uh, trainable right uh, trainable uh, is equal to false I can do it like this right so there are another different ways to make the layers frozen right so by frozen i mean it will not modify the weight of that particular layer now you can see that for example our validation accuracy is 63 percent only with first epoch usually it do not happen right usually it, it is very less so actually mm, i have because of the shortage of time uh, i could not train all of them so uh, you can use for example few more epochs it's better that you just do it for five or five epochs are more than enough till the time you find uh, 95 or 97 percent uh, accurate then you can just stop it so for example you can try different epochs so after having this you can just name any for example model 3 and other you can just store it right so the, your new model is already trained and then you can uh, save it now actually uh, i have already executed this uh, prior to making this video i have executed for few more epochs uh, in the peace time so i have already trained models so now let me load uh, the model so this is the way how to load the model so i have stored my model actually already so let me modify a new model okay so now once we have trained our model so let's check the for example markdown for this okay so let me execute this and now check the checking the network for predictions right so I have copied in my folder in my main folder sorry my main folder I have already copied one of the uh, one of the image like this 02 so now I'm going to uh, I've just it's JPG so I'm just reading it right and when I plot it so it's uh, for example this is 1000 by 1000 so it's, it's a raw image right so it's a raw image and now for example uh, what are the steps I do need to do like for example this is resizing 2 to 4 I need to resize this image and then NP dot expand dimensions why need we need four dimension as I told you before that the image dimension was like you see one nine five one two to four two to four and two three so any case we need uh, the one more extra dimension actually there are the reason behind it is they do have depth wise Depthwise conversion neural networks, so that is uh, the reason why they need extra dimension. But anyhow, uh, you can just assume that we need a fourth dimension. So we have catered for all this before uh, by doing minus one. You see, when we were doing it, in case of the training, we just over here we did minus one. But in this case, uh, as it's just single image, so it's better that we just we can also do it using np dot expand and we are normalizing this data once we have normalized our model so let me predict uh, okay what is my prediction 
so once I you see it's negative so for for all those images having a face mask these will be as if we have used sigma function this will be negative let's try some image uh, which is uh, for example let's try some image which is not negative right so in that case uh, in that case uh, for example without a face mask so in that case for example let's try uh, on unknown image right so in that case for example face mm, sat woman if i try okay sad woman for example actually i just want to show some image i have already stored ah yeah so this is the image i have already stored in my computer if you write sad woman face uh so you, uh, you see i have already stored this uh, image sad woman face and then Oh, it should be extra lot. Yeah, so I've already stored this uh, image. And um, once I have st stored image, uh, let me check. Like this, checking the network for unknown images, right? So let me read this unknown image again. So this is a woman image. So let me plot it yeah so we have this image right downloaded from internet let me check that either our algorithm is working or not uh, before diving into the actual uh, live demo so in this case uh, uh, again one another important thing you need to do for example previously these images are contain contains only the faces and it's very limited other information in this case so it's better that we should have dynamic uh, face detection right so in order to detect the face it's better that har if you write har case uh, face detection xml if you write this har cascade face uh, xml you just right click and mm, okay it's not x it's xml right if you write xml yeah this is the one so when you write xml hard cascade face detection xml on google and you can just reach over here in the first uh, github link and you can just download uh, you need uh, this one hard cascade frontal face default right click save a link as actually i have already uh, downloaded it like this one okay so i don't need to download again so in your case you will download why we need it actually har is a feature detector actually uh, used in the object uh, for detecting the face right so in this case we have already pre-stored faces how to detect any kind of face in an image so it's for that so as you have installed new open cv so over here we you have to uh, if you found uh, if you google command how to do it so you might find only this but in the latest open cv uh, we have to write these commands as well right so once you just write this command now in the face cascade we have these features in order to get our face right so in order to after getting the face so actually they, they do have the gray face okay uh, uh, they have do have a gray face so um, we need to convert from uh, bgr to gray gray is only single channel right if you just check let me check the size of the gray so you see they do we do not have in third dimension right so that is the reason so if i press over here if i check the frame dot shape it will be three you see it's a three dimension so it's the same size but without a dimension so now after having um, for example after having all uh, this face we can just say face face cascade dot detect multiple scales like in this gray image so we can just find different faces so if we have, we have multiple faces we can just find and then after doing it we are just uh, in the x y and all so what it it does it gives you the four corners of the face right if we detect the face then it will provide the four corners and we have checked that if we do not face then just throw an error that face is not detected and we can just crop the face so over here we are just cropping the face right so big why we are cropping the face because we need separate face in our because most of the images are face faces right so let me crop it 
and uh, for example if i write the frame actually it has also uh, put a rectangle you see over here it has also put a rectangle on the same uh, face so let me print this face rather than the crop face so i have just detected the face and we can just easily put the rectangle on it and then after we have okay so let me check the crop phrase you see so this is the crop phrase so we crop the face ry over here if i execute this this is the crop phrase right now we can just perform similar kind of stuff like face ry is this 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 can be any of them so let's resize this into two to four into two to four and then uh, add one add more one more dimension and then normalize it the same things we are following right just in order to check our uh, predictions right so in this case if i write the same new model dot predict this time i will just write in my final image predictions and if i want to check my predictions you see it is positive right so if it is positive it it shows that it do not have any kind of face mask and in case it was wearing a anybody if a person was wearing a mask then it was the negative because of the sigmoid function right because we had only two classes so that is why it's easy now that we have established our all codes it's time to go for the real time demo by combining all these codes these codes we have learned so far okay so it's time to have real uh, video demo uh, so far we have learned that how to import cv2 and then for example we have already downloaded this uh, hard cascade features and uh, we are having some rectangle uh, rectangle uh, i will let you know in a while and uh, for example this is the command to just uh, open your webcam so based on your uh, if you have multiple webcams then it can be indexed at different okay different uh, number like it can be zero one two by default usually it's zero but uh, you have to find you need to find uh, is it zero one so if, if this is a dynamic code if for example if you have two maximum webcams then it will work right and otherwise if it do not find any kind of webcam it can throw an error so after re reading the webcam image like for example cab so after having this uh, read we can have some frame like so this is the image this is a video and then we are just reading uh, out of the video we are just reading an image right once we have a video uh, sorry image then uh, this image we are converting so this is the hard cascade features right and then we are con con converting this uh, image into gray level and then we uh, in the gray image we are just finding how many uh, multiple faces exist and then based on faces we are just uh, having all the faces and just drawing the rectangle on it and then if we, we can throw an error if we do not have any rectangle at all and then once we do have a face then we can just crop so this is the cropping right we are cropping the face okay so the, we are just cropping the face roi so uh, region of interest so once we have the face crop then we can have for example this is face and then we are resizing into two to four expanding the dimension the one we did it before and then normalizing it and now after normalizing it this is the this is for font right we are just checking what what font we are using and then uh, previously what we did like predictions is just this final image i will give it to my predictions right i'm setting some font again uh, right so you can just ignore it and then if as i told you before that if the prediction is uh, positive it means that there is no mask right as we learned before for example uh, for this as we don't uh, we didn't have any face mask on so it, the prediction answer was positive right and in the case when there was a mask the answer was negative right so now that we have uh, established our methodology so if the prediction is greater than zero we will say status no mask and then this is just to draw a, a black background you will you will we will witness soon so uh, because sometimes your background is so colorful that it uh, the text is not 
conspicuous or not shown very bright right so it's better that you must have a background and then after having this is this is black right zero 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 is black bgr so all of the, the rectangle color is black if you want to have any other kind color of the rectangle you can just change it's bgr so then add a text over it so if it, there is no mask so it's better that to have red color right so it's bgr so r is 255 so it will write the black box and write writing will be red and then we are having some another text as well so we have having two texts right one is on the black box and one is another you will just see soon so for example let me show you like this is the uh, okay I haven't, run, I haven't run it i will show you but in this case for example there's no there's no mask and this is the black so we have two no, two messages no mask and no mask right so we will just execute so this is the first one on the black box with the red color and another one is an, again with red color right and if we do have a face mask then um, uh, right it, it will not be pos uh, it will not be uh, neg positive right it will be negative so then we just need to draw a rectangle same and in this case bgr so g is the green so it's better that to write everything in green right so this is uh, again this is the i'm just giving the name for tutorial if i run this you see you can find that there is no face mask right so there's no face mask and it's written so what if i wear face mask and the beauty of this is it will work on your own face as well because i didn't uh, as you see as you have witnessed inside the video that we haven't trained on our own data set so it's dynamic it's generalized right say if i'm wearing a mask so you see it detected that i'm wearing face mask and if i for example ignore it so it's no face mask if i wear it again so for example if i wear it again so it will say face mask so for example now you want to have uh, some beep on it right so what if you you want to generate an alarm uh, for example if you have the um, okay so in order to uh, add some beeps let's add some beeps right so let me make nodes okay so if I, I want to make some node uh, all I need is to just copy all this again all right so I, I have all, already copied all of my code again and I need to uh, put some sound in it right so these are the command you don't need to install anything uh, in the Python if you have in installed anaconda so it, it will just down uh, you need to import wind sound so uh, and then whenever for example you're not wearing a person is not wearing a mask so it's better that to start a beep right so when okay so you have just uh, frequency and duration and then um, if you are not wearing a mask so okay no then you can just at the end you can just say when uh, beep right and if a person is wearing the mask we don't need to have a beep right let me execute this again so as i'm wearing a face mask so it is there is no uh, beep in it so if i don't wear you see actually there is a lag uh, because of the beep it's stuck so it's uh, i'm not wearing a mask so it, it start beeping so let me wear a mask so now that I'm wearing a mask, actually there are some I think outliers as well. So as long as I'm wearing a mask, so it do not have any kind of beep, right? So thank you so much for this video. Stay tuned uh, to our YouTube channel and please subscribe it so that you can have a, whenever our new video comes up, you can just find it uh, right way. Thank you so much.